All right. Hey, guys. One more story this week. This book, also a legend, uh, is called The Story of Jumping Mouse. This book was written by John Stepto uh, Steptoe. So a culture's legends teach about the important values in that culture. So what does the word value bring to mind for you? Definitely something that has um, an importance, right? So one important Native American value is that we should give from what we have to help those in need and trust that when we are in need, we will um, be helped in return. So give so that maybe one day when you need to be given things to, somebody will help you out. So this Native American legend is the story of Jumping Mouse. So let's find out what it has to teach us. The Story of Jumping Mouse by John Steptoe. Once there was a young mouse who lived in the brush near a great river. During the day, he and the other mice hunted for food. At night, they gathered to hear the old ones tell stories. The young mouse liked to hear about the desert beyond the river, and he got shivers from the stories about the dangerous shadows that lived in the sky. But his favorite was the tale of the far off land. The far off land sounded so wonderful, the young mouse began to dream about it. He knew he would never be content until he had been there. The old ones warned that the journey would be long and perilous, but the young mouse would not be swayed. He set off one morning before the sun had risen. So perilous, the word perilous, is an important word on this page. It means dangerous. Um, what dangers might the young mouse face on his journey? What do you think he's going to face out there? Obviously, he's a mouse, which is an animal, in the food chain. So he might, you know, run into some larger animals that might try to hurt him, maybe? What do you think? It was even... It was evening before he reached the edge of the bush of the brush. Before him was the river. On the other side was the desert. The young mouse peered into the deep water. How will I ever get across? He said in dismay. Don't you know how to swim? Said a gravely voice. The young mouse looked around and saw a small green frog. Hello. He said, what is swim? This is swimming, said the frog, and she jumped into the river. Oh, said the young mouse, I don't think I can do that. Why do you need to cross the river? Asked the frog, hopping back up to the bank. I want to go to the far off land, said the young mouse. It sounds too beautiful to live in um, a lifetime and not see it. In that case, you need my help. I'm a magic frog. Who are you? I'm a mouse, said the young mouse. Magic frog laughed. That's not a name. I'll give you a name that will help you on your journey. I name you Jumping Mouse. As soon as the magic frog said this, the mouse, uh, the young mouse felt a strange tingling in his hind legs, he hopped a small hop and to his surprise, jumped twice as high as he ever jumped before. Thank you, he said, admiring his powerful new legs. You're welcome, said Magic Frog. Now step onto this leaf and we'll cross the river together. When they were safely on the other side, Magic Frog said, you will encounter hardships on your way, but don't despair. You will reach the far off land if you keep hope alive within you. And so like the old mice, 
um, magic frog tells jumping mouse that the journey to the far off place will be dangerous, right? He's telling him the same thing that his mice adults told him. Um, what is different about the way magic frog talks about the journey than how his family talked about the journey? What kind of effect do you think magic frog's words will have on jumping mouse? To me, I feel like it was more positive, like, hey, you can get there, just got to stick with it, persevere, right? To me, I think that's the difference. Jumping Mouse set off at once, hopping quickly from, brush to, from, from bush to bush. The shadows circled above, but he avoided being seen. He ate berries when he could uh, find them and slept only when he was exhausted. Days passed. Though he was able to travel quickly, he began to wonder if he'd ever reach the other side of the desert. He then came upon a stream that coursed through the dry land. Under a large berry bush, he, he met a fat old mouse. There's a fat old mouse. What strange hind legs you have, said the fat mouse. They were a gift from Magic Frog when he named me, said Jumping Mouse proudly. Pooh, snorted the fat mouse. What good are those? They've helped me come this far across the desert, and with luck they'll carry me to the far-off land, said Jumping Mouse. But now I'm very tired. May I rest here for a while? Indeed you may, said the fat mouse. In fact, you can stay forever. Thank you, but I'll stay only until I'm rested. I've seen the far off land in my dreams and I just, I must be on my way as soon as I'm able. Dreams, said the fat mouse scornfully. I used to have such dreams, but all I ever found was desert. Why do you jump about the desert when everything anyone needs is right here? Jumping Mouse tried to explain that it wasn't a question of need, but something he felt he had to do. But the fat mouse only snorted again. Finally, Jumping Mouse dug a hole and curled up for the night. The next day, the fat mouse warned him to stay on his side of the stream. A snake lives on the other side, he said, but don't worry. He's afraid of water, so he'll never cross the stream. There's a snake. Life was easy beneath the berry bush and Jumping Mouse was soon rested and, and strong. He and the fat mouse ate and slept and slept and ate. Then one morning when he went to the stream for a drink, he caught sight of his reflection. He was almost as fat as the fat old mouse. It's time for me to go, thought Jumping Mouse. I didn't come all this way to settle down under a berry bush. Just then, he noticed that a branch had gotten caught on a narrow, on the narrow of the stream. It spawned the water like a bridge. Now the snake could cross. Jumping Mouse hurried back to warn the fat mouse, but the mouse hole was empty, and there was a strange smell in the air. Snake. Jumping Mouse was too late. Poor old friend. He had. He thought he. Had, he thought as he hurried away. He lost hope of finding his dream, and now his life is over. Jumping Mouse traveled throughout the night, and the next morning he saw that he had reached a grassy plain. Exhausted, he hopped towards a large boulder where he could rest in safely. But as he got closer, he realized the boulder was an enormous shaggy bison lying in the grass. Every once in a while, it groaned. Jumping Mouse shivered at the terrible sound. Hello, Great One, he said bravely. I'm Jumping Mouse, and I'm traveling to the far off land. Why do you lie here as you were dying, as if you were dying? Because I am dying, said the bison. I drank some poison stream, and it blinded me. I can't see to find tender grass to eat or or sweet water to drink. I'm sure I'll surely die. Poor bison. 
Humping Mouse was sad to see some so wondrous a beast so helpless. When I began my journey, said um, he said, Magic Frog gave me a name and strong legs to carry me to the far off land. My magic is not as powerful as hers, but I'll do what I can to help you. I name you Eyes of a Mouse. As soon as he had spoken, Jumping Mouse had heard the bison snort with joy. He heard, but he could no longer see, for he had given the bison his own sight. Oh my gosh. Aww. I'm starting to understand the story now. Okay, so I wonder how Jumping, not, jumping Mice will continue his journey now. Now that he's given his sight to the bison. And I wonder, and I wonder if you're wondering this too, I wonder if that frog lost his hop when he gave his hop to the mouse. Wow. I've read another story like this before, so I'm making a connection to another book. Thank you, said the eyes. Thank you, said Eyes of the Mouth. You are small, but you have done a great thing. If you will hop along beneath me, the shadows of the sky won't see you, and I will guide you to the mountains. Jumping Mouse did as he was told. He hopped to the rhythm of the bison's hooves, and in this way, he reached the foot of the mountains. Oh, wow, that's so sweet. Okay, I'm an animal of the plains, so I must stop here, said Eyes of the Mouse. How will you cross the mountains when you can't see? There will be a way, said Jumping Mouse. Hope is alive within me. You said goodbye to the to his he said goodbye to his friend, then he dug a hole and went to sleep. The next morning Jumping Mouse woke to the breeze to a cool breeze that blew down from the mountain peaks. Cautiously, he set out in the direction of the coolness. He had not um, gone far when he felt fur beneath his paws. He jumped back in alarm and sniffed the air. Wolf! He froze in terror. But when nothing happened, he gathered up his courage and said, Excuse me, I'm Jumping Mouse, and I'm traveling to the far-off land. Can you tell me the way? I would if I could, said the wolf, but the wolf finds his way with his nose, and mine will no longer smell for me. What happened, said Jumping Mouse. I was once a proud and lazy creature, replied the wolf. I misused the gift of smell, and so I lost it. I have learned not to be proud, but without my nose to tell me where I am and where I'm going, I cannot survive. I am lying here waiting for the end. Jumping Mouse was saddened by the wolf's story. He told him about magic frog and eyes of a mouse. I have a little magic left, he said. I'll be happy to help you. I name you Nose of a Mouse. The wolf howled for joy, jumping mouse and uh, could hear him sniffing the air, taking in the mountain fragrances but Jumping Mouse could no longer smell the pine-scented breezes. He no longer had to, uh, the use of his nose or his eyes. You are but a small creature, said Nose of a Mouse, but you have given me a great gift. You must let me thank you. Come, hop along beneath where the shadows of the sky won't see you. I will guide you through the mountains to the far-off land. So Jumping Mouse hopped to the rhythm of the wolf's padded paws, and in this way he reached the far-off land. I am an animal of the mountains, so I must stop here, said Nose of the Mouse. How will you manage if you have, can no longer see or smell? There will be a way, said Jumping Mouse. Then uh, He then said goodbye to his friend and dug a hole and went to sleep. The next morning, Jumping Mouse woke up and crawled from his hole. I am here, he said. I feel the earth beneath my paws. I hear the wind rustling leaves on the trees. The sun warms my bones. All in, all is not lost, but I 
but I'll never be as I was. How will I ever manage? Then Jumping Mouse began to cry. Jumping Mouse, he heard a gravely voice say, Magic Frog, is that you? Jumping Mouse asked, swallowing his tears. Yes, said Magic Frog. Don't cry, Jumping Mouse. Your unselfish spirit has brought you great hardship, but it is the same spirit of hope and compassion that has brought you to the far off land. So what do you think Magic Frog means by that? Hmm, there's another picture. The frog and mouse. Jumping, uh, jump high, jumping mouse, commanded Magic Frog. Jumping Mouse did as he was told and jumped as high as he could. Then he felt the air lifting him higher, still into the sky. He stretched out his paws in the sun and felt strangely powerful. To his joy, he began to see the wondrous beauty of the world above and below and the smell and to smell the scent of earth and sky and living things. Jumping Mouse, he heard Magic cro uh, Frog call, I give you a new name. You are now called Eagle. What? And you will live in the far off land forever. He turned him into an eagle, you guys. What? Oh, wow. So what do you think Jumping Mouse, now Eagle, thinks about his experience? Do you think he felt like it was worth it? Um, and so what do you think he thinks about his experience and about what uh, the way his generosity has been re repaid? Because he was super generous the entire time, right? And then he was repaid by turning him into an Eagle so he could live and soar freely in the faraway land. So cool. All right, you guys, thanks for listening. Love you guys. Have a good day.